Hi, it's Alaska Granny. If you think back over your life, maybe that of your parents and your grandparents, people used to have food on hand in a pantry, in the cellar, somewhere in their home, because they used to want to make sure just in case they had enough to eat. If you came from a farming family, you definitely had the food canned and put away because you needed to provide for your family over the winter. People didn't go to the grocery store every few days. They didn't run out to buy one item. They kept things on hand. They did their big shopping, maybe once a week, every few weeks, once a month. And in between, they made do with what they had. We evolved from just in case to just in time. People started going to the grocery store just to pick up an item or two, just to make dinner for tonight. Stores carried a larger variety of foods, so then they had just-in-time space to store things. It used to be a special occasion to go out to eat. Now there are fast foods and chain restaurants on nearly every other corner. 25 years ago, I was on a trip with one of my friends and we passed a McDonald's and her two-year-old started yelling and screaming, chicken nuggets, chicken nuggets. And then how does the kid even know about chicken nuggets? You're obviously going there because my kids are just looking out the window. Do you see how we've changed and evolved into what are the food storage protocols that we have for our family? Lots of people aren't worried, what's my next meal going to be? They're worried, where am I going to pick it up? People don't seem to have stockpiles in their home like they used to. If you look even on home remodeling channels at the television, they don't have pantries. They take out the cupboards and make open shelving. There's obviously no place for people to be storing and stockpiling extra food. We don't want to get into that habit of no more just in case. And then we went to just in time because what happens if we are just too late and we're out of time? Then what are we going to do? Think about what you're seeing in our society and even when you go to the grocery store yourself. I went recently and the food I picked up had the same best buy, use by, sell by date as food I bought months and even a year ago. It's almost like somebody in the warehouse was holding the food back and just in time, we need to put that out in the store before it's expired. When I was young, I was involved in a farming community. We used to have grain, potatoes, cattle, and yes, you could send some of that to the mill. You could put some of that in the cellars, but then by the next spring, you absolutely needed to sell those products. They begin to deteriorate. You needed the room also to store the next year's harvest. So it appears they're cleaning out the warehouses, pushing the food out onto the shelf before the best by use by sell by date has passed. And then look what's going on. There are huge droughts. There are record setting heats. Crops are not being grown this year in many, many places. Some places may be having bumper crops, but not everywhere. And it's alarming at the amount of food that is not being produced this year, which should be coming into the stores in the fall, through the winter, and all of next year until the next crops can be grown. Combine that with what happened during the pandemic when people were lined up for miles to get foods from a food bank. Then if you look at the news, you see worldwide there is violence, there is unrest, there are problems, there are food shortages, people are hungry, things don't seem to be calming down, and it doesn't look like rainbows and sunshine are on the horizon. It actually looks like it might be grim and dim. We want to make sure that we're providing the things that we need for our family. I was recently looking at a FEMA guideline, and yes, it told you all of the things that you need to be prepared. And it also had a few photographs. Let's just go to the truck and get some fresh water. Why wouldn't you want to have enough water in your home? Plus, if you've ever watched the news after a storm, it's not a few people standing there. It's desperate people lined up in the heat trying to get any little drops of water. Look at this picture. Oh, let's just wander down the table at the food bank and just pick out whatever we want. 
that is not the reality of what's going on in most communities. People that are going to food banks are lined up in their cars and because of the pandemic, they're not even allowed to come in and pick out things. They're just sticking a box or a bag in the back of their car. And that's after they waited for hours. If you don't have food on hand, think about at the minimum what the FEMA guidelines are. Get some food, get some water, stock up on the basic supplies that you're going to need. Then you need to think about the response time for FEMA and they're not there within just a few days. And when they do come into a widespread area after some kind of an emergency, it still takes a long time to get things organized and they tend to set up in the middle parts of cities. They're not looking at helping people in suburbs and out in the countryside nearly as quickly, if at all. The people in the cities become the priorities. So if you're in the city, you definitely need to make sure that you have things you need because you don't want to be stranded waiting for help to come. If you're in the suburbs or the countryside, help may not be coming for a long, long time, if at all. So it's critical that you make sure that you have the things that you need. As a society, have we evolved from just in case, just in time to just too late? Make sure it's not out of time for you. Stockpile the things that you need. Get some emergency food that you can open and eat. Canned foods, easy to prepare packaged foods. Tear open and eat things. Because in a big emergency, the first things you need to do are just make sure you can get something to eat so that you can deal with all of the other things that come with emergencies. It's not the time to break out your big barrels of beans and rice and start cooking things. It might not even be possible in a time of a power outage. You need foods that you can open and eat. Yes, you need to have your beans and rice, your long-term food storage, but after things calm down, that's when you can rely on those foods to help feed your family. So yes, get a nice supply of open and eat foods, things you can eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, and snacks. Make sure you have several weeks of simple, easy to prepare foods. Then you can start incorporating the deepest, longest food storage foods. You want to make sure that if something happens tomorrow, that you have something to eat that day. Making sure that we can provide for ourselves and our family, just in case, is what it means to be a prepper. If you enjoyed my video, I hope you'll share it with someone else you think might like it. Please subscribe to the Alaska Granny channel. <laughs> Teddy, look at the camera.